So, bonjour, bienvenue, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, bonsoir, uh, bienvenue, I'm, je suis très content que vous soyez là. I'm David Gutnick of CBC Radio, uh, based here in Montreal, and on behalf of the hosts of this evening's program, the Aga Khan Foundation Canada and Concordia University, I'd like to welcome you officially to the launch of the Montreal edition of Bridges That Unite. And uh, I have to say, as a comme journaliste, j'ai toujours aimé travailler avec la, la Fondation Aga Khan. Je pense que ça fait plus que dix ans que j'ai la chance d'aller uh, tous les mois de mai uh, pour la marche uh, sur le Montréal. And every year, it's, 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 a, I look forward to it, actually. It's such a beautiful occasion because as a journalist, often, you end up talking to people for a few minutes and you get their story and you head off. But what I've learned at so many of the Aga Khan Foundation marches is to walk with people and talk with them. And it's not as though I'm walking in their shoes, but I'm hearing them talk about their lives and so on. Et moi, je me souviens, il y a quelques années, j'ai fait le tour du, du Montréal avec un, une madame qui était dans la soixantaine, qui venait de l'Afghanistan. Et son fils était avec elle. Et donc, lui était le traducteur, l'interprète. Puis, elle parlait de sa vie, de qu'est-ce qu'elle a vécu en Afghanistan, de comment c'était sa vie ici au, au Canada, comment elle était fière de son fils. Et lui était adolescent, était quelqu'un qui écoutait le hip-hop, puis il parlait anglais, il parlait français, et, et je pense qu'ils avaient vécu dans un camp de réfugiés euh, en Inde, ou Pakistan, je ne me souviens plus. Et c'était tellement un privilège pour moi, comme quelqu'un qui, qui est né au Canada, d'avoir la chance d'écouter. And for me, that's what the Aga Khan Foundation has been. It's, it's actually... I, I, I almost get choked up trying to talk about it a bit because it started off as just, oh, David, would you please come and stand on a stage and introduce some people? And every year, year after year, I learn that it's walking with people and it's learning about people. And today, with Jennifer, we walked through the exhibition. And I don't know if you've had a chance to walk through that exhibition, but so often when you see pictures of the developing world, there are pictures of misery, there are pictures of people without water who are having such a tough time, there are pictures of angry men who are put in situations of need and who are upset because of that. But if you really look at the pictures in this exhibition, what you see is a kind of beauty in people learning to improve their own lives. And as I walked around the mountain that many times, that's what I was learning is that You don't hand someone a solution. That'll never work. And you don't uh, think that people are unable to come up with their own ideas because they, things haven't worked in the past and they're not going to work in the present and they certainly won't work in the future. What, what I've learned is walking around that mountain and learning again, remembering again as I look at this exhibition, is, is that these are lovely people. And these are people who, with help and some guidance, and with some kind of uh, listening to them, sitting in that circle of chairs. And I almost wanted to, when I see, saw those five chairs, j'avais le goût de m'asseoir, puis de regarder autour de moi, puis de demander quatre personnes autour de moi de s'asseoir, et de dire, bon, mais qui êtes-vous? Qu'est-ce que vous faites? There was a, there's a Buddhist monk who lives in, uh, Nova Scotia, and uh, Pima Chodron. And when she gets, someone said to her, what's the most important question you ever ask yourself? And she said, oh, I've got an answer for that. And she said, I'm lying in my bed before I get up very early in the morning, and I say to myself, I wonder what adventure is going to happen to me today. And she says, that's the most important question that she asks herself as someone who's thought about important things her whole life. And when I came to that exhibition today, and I was walking around, and I was looking at those photos, that's what happened in my head. I said, hmm, j'ai regardé la photo de deux femmes au Zanzibar 
qui riaient, qui, euh, qui ont trouvé l'argent pour construire une école dans leur village. Et I looked at those beautiful faces and I said, I, I, I wonder what's going to happen in their lives today. I wonder where they are today. And so when I went through those photos, that's what I was thinking. And that's something I've learned from the Aga Khan Foundation is I look at those photos of those beautiful people and I say, I wonder what adventure is happening in their lives today. And uh, for me, that's been a very important part of my life. Now, presenté jusqu'au 26 mars, l'exposition invite les visiteurs à examiner le rôle du Canada dans le monde. Les ponts de l'unité marquent les 25 ans d'un partenariat fructueux entre le pays, le Canada, et le réseau Aga Khan du développement dans certaines des régions les plus isolées et les plus pauvres du monde. And you certainly see that. Afghanistan is a lot in the news. Asia is a lot in the news. We see, uh, we see pictures every day. We try and understand what's going on every day. And le réseau Aga Khan, bien sûr, nous aide dans tout ça. This exhibition, the one that you see upstairs, has been across the country. It's been in museums, universities, and cultural centers in all kinds of communities all across the country. All across the country. And basically what it's doing is asking people like you, visitors, young people, people who have, uh, it says here in the script, old people, but none of us are old, come on. <laughs> we're just, we're getting wiser. We're getting wiser. To consider Canada's role in some of the world's most isolated and impoverished regions, and to challenge the assumptions and the perceptions about international development. And I, I'm just about to, to leave you to the President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Judith Woodsworth, but I just wanted to tell you that that's very important, that line, to challenge our assumptions. Because I know as a journalist, as a broadcaster, I have all kinds of assumptions that are wrong. And it's seeing those beautiful faces that helps me to think again about how those lives can become better and how my life can become better when I understand those lives better. So with that, I'd like to invite the President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Judith Woods, to say a few words about this, about being lucky enough to host this very special exhibition. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Concordia University. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, et bienvenue à l'Université Concordia. And it is truly a pleasure, and we are indeed very lucky, very fortunate, to welcome our guests from the Aga Khan Foundation Canada and our partners in this wonderful exhibition. And I was treated to a very quick tour, but I will come back and have a very thorough tour later but it is a wonderful exhibition and we are absolutely delighted. So I'd like to extend a special welcome, a warm welcome to Mr. Khalil Sharif, the Chief Executive Officer of the Aga Khan Foundation Canada. And I want to say that this event marks the beginning of what promises to be a very fruitful partnership, a relationship between our university and the Aga Khan Foundation Canada. C'est un partenariat construit sur des fondations solides an engagement commun and an engagement for the changement social and the progress and a mission ancrée in an education progressist and open to the community. We have a lot to be proud of as an institution and really one of, our, one of the key directions in our strategic plan is in fact community engagement and social responsibility. And a theme that runs throughout all of the work that we do is sustainable development. So we have so much in common with the Aga Khan Foundation. We are a large comprehensive university in Montreal, uh, 44,000 students. And we welcome a very rich and diverse student population. Uh, international students account for about 17% of our student body. These are international students coming directly from foreign countries, but as well, we welcome students who are first-generation uh, Canadians, and altogether, they represent over 150 different countries. So we are truly international. But we are known as a welcoming place, an open university, and we, de and we believe deeply in engagement and involvement. Many of our students are the first in their family to come to university. 
and we make a point of serving all of our students, whether they are full-time or part-time, uh, whether they're returning to school as mature students, whether they come from a multitude of disadvantaged uh, groups, and we have students who come from economically disadvantaged, geographically dis disadvantaged, and um, we try to serve everybody in the same way and try to maintain the highest quality of education in everything that we do. In our teaching, our research, and our student life, we work to convey not only knowledge and professional skills, but the kind of knowledge and values that will transform our students into informed, concerned, and engaged citizens who will make a difference in the world throughout their career path, through their interests and through their social involvement, as well as the work that they will do in their particular jobs. And it is our hope that our students will foster a greater understanding and empathy for the point of view of others. Tout comme la Fondation Aga Khan Canada, nous sommes profondément déterminés à lutter contre l'injustice sociale et la pauvreté au Canada et dans le monde. La Fondation subventionne actuellement 40 initiatives dans une douzaine de pays, implantant des programmes dans les communautés les plus éloignées, les plus pauvres, et ce, sans distinction de croyance, d'origine ou de sexe. Et c'est justement cette œuvre qui a motivé notre partenariat, car nous souscrivons à l'objectif global de la Fondation, le développement humain durable. At any one time, our students, our faculty, our staff, and our alumni are involved in countless projects as volunteers. And we have many programs at Concordia that provide students in particular with the opportunity to contribute to the work that's being done in developing countries, and in fact, in some parts of our country which have been compared to developing countries, unfortunately. Our student body is particularly active in projects in Uganda and Kenya, and some with the support of AKFC. In 2008, um, in fact, the Concordia University Volunteer Abroad Program in Uganda won an, a very important award for its work in helping orphans. And recently, after the earthquake in Haiti, our entire campus was mobilized in organizing a multitude of relief activities for local Haitians and for the victims of the earthquake in Haiti. And among our professoriate, many of whom are here today, and I'm very pleased to see you here, we have expertise in many areas related to sustainable development and to development initiatives around the world. So several of our faculty members will be participating in some of the special events that are listed on the papers that you found on your chairs. And these are events that are connected to the exhibition, Bridges That Unite, and they'll take place over the next few weeks. So read carefully and uh, make sure that you attend some of these events. The theme of bridges is very apropos. Uh, just last week, our Faculty of Engineering held an international bridge building competition, <laughs> which, had, which had about 40 universities participating in it. Um, but it also has special significance to me as a translator and a translation scholar because the act of translation in Canada is described as bridge building and translators have been described as the builders of bridges in Canada just because we form that link across the linguistic divide and we bring cultures together. So I really like the title of this exhibit, Bridges Do Unite, and I congratulate you on, on the, the wonderful theme and the content itself. So in this case, Bridges That Unite is about opening our eyes, our hearts, and our minds. It's about expanding our vision of worldwide development. It's about challenging our views, as David said, challenging our assumptions, our views on international development and Canada's place in the world. It provides a strong educational experience for our university community and the wider public, and we are delighted to host it here, and in particular, this particular space, which is a crossroads. People walk through it, as we said earlier, to get to Tim Hortons. <laughs> but uh, people are walking through it because we have a gallery. Here we have a cinema, and we will be hosting a film festival 
There's a library in this building, and the building also houses a number of academic departments uh, that are dedicated to the humanities. So it's a perfect spot for interaction, and there will be a lot of traffic through the exhibit, and not just to get coffee. So again, on behalf of the entire Concordia community, I would like to express our warmest welcome to the Foundation and our deepest gratitude. Ce n'est qu'un début d'une longue amitié et d'un partenariat qui ne cessera de porter fruit. À tous et à toutes, je vous souhaite une excellente soirée and please enjoy the exhibition tonight and for the weeks to come. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, President Woodworth. And you know, I didn't realize that you were a translation scholar. Now I know why you love this building. If you walk in and you look up, you see the art objects, they're letters and words. This is a, this is a whole building built of words, it is. As President Woodsworth mentioned, there are a number of events that are gonna be taking place uh, in this building and so on, events and programs associated with the exhibition. There's gonna be panel discussions, there'll be film screenings, this will be, used uh, quite often, uh, this, this room, you'll have a chance to come back to it. There'll be cultural performances, so you'll be able to see uh, some, some beautiful things too, because I think we can't forget the beauty that's associated with all of this. This layer of programming, it's an essential part of what's happening, it's a conversation. Remember those five chairs in the circle outside? Well, that is perhaps just a part of the stimulation of conversation and dialogue that that's going to be happening here because of this, this, uh, this whole exhibition. It's now my pleasure to introduce Khalil Sharif, the CEO of the Aga Khan Foundation of Canada, to present Bridges That Unite and its remarkable story, because it is a, a beautiful story, of partnership with Canada and Canadians in the developing world. Mesdames et Messieurs, j'invite Monsieur Khalil Sharif, Directeur Général de la Fondation, de nous parler de ce partenariat exceptionnel avec le Canada qui transforme les murs, et on parle vraiment des murs, qui nous divise des pays en développement et les ponts, comme vous dites bien, Concordia connaît très bien les ponts, nous connaissons très bien les ponts, qui nous unit tout. Alors, avec ça, Monsieur Khalil. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, friends of uh, Aga Khan Foundation Canada, friends of Concordia, uh, bonsoir, welcome uh, this evening. Uh, let me thank David Gutnick first uh, for being with us. Uh, it, I'm almost giddy sharing a stage with uh, the great uh, David Gutnick. Uh, David, you represent a tradition of Canadian journalism which has been an essential part of this country's understanding of itself and understanding of its own role in the world. And for the eyes and ears you are to so many Canadians, uh, both at home and abroad, thank you. Uh, and it's an honor to have you associated with this, uh, with this effort. So thank you, David. Et je voudrais de plus vous remercier, President Woodworth, ainsi que votre équipe. Uh, pour la collaboration créative et novatrice qui nous a permis de mettre sur pied cette exposition à Concordia dans ce cadre exceptionnel. Um, it couldn't be uh, a more elegant or natural fit. Uh, everything we've learned about Concordia over the last um, uh, several months in uh, joining together to put on this exhibition has vindicated our uh, choice of partners. Uh, we have had a degree of hospitality and openness um, and energy that has been unprecedented uh, as we've taken this exhibition across. So uh, to you and your team, thank you very much. You should be very proud of this institution and its desire to extend its reach beyond the classroom, beyond its own walls to a world deeply in need of institutions such as yours. So thank you, Concordia. Now, the uh, combination of um, uh, uh, David's uh, introduction and energy and the extraordinary hospitality of Concordia has lent this evening a very festive quality, and I want to thank you both for that. But um, despite the festive nature of our gathering today, we also cannot uh, ignore the fact that we actually gather 
uh, at a very difficult time in world affairs. It only takes, uh, I think, uh, a scan of headlines of newspapers on any one day to remind ourselves that uh, this is a, a time of fragility, of great difficulty. And historically, it is at times of fragility and difficulty that uh, the people of this country have found it fit to exercise uh, leadership. And it's a very particular brand of leadership because it is a leadership that has to be premised on a very particular idea of power because this country has never been and will likely never be the world's greatest military might, although our military is uh, a courageous force when they are deployed. It uh, has never been and will likely never be uh, a country of global population might. Our economy is a rounding error in global GDP. So a country that uh, will not be known for exercising power based on its physical might, its economic size, its population. 50 years ago when uh, Pearson won his Peace Prize, uh, it was a time of great fragility in world affairs. And the world turned to Canada and this country led. Not by its muscle, but by the power of its ideas and its ideals. And 50 years later, those ideas and those ideals are once again the fuel for a new generation to define a leadership role in the world at a time of great fragility. Bridges That Unite uh, is an effort to bring together Canadians to explore a history of collaboration, a history of joint and common endeavor to support the developing world premised on a certain set of values, a set of ideas that prizes the capabilities, the agency of the people we are seeking to help, brings sensitivity, thoughtfulness, and empathy to invest in the capabilities of the communities themselves to define their own path of development and to achieve real improvements in quality of life. And it turns out that those ideas and ideals are not foreign to our history. Over the last 30 years of a relationship that we have enjoyed with Canada, but not only the Aga Khan Development Network has enjoyed with Canada, we have seen this leadership in community after community, in country after country. It is our own history. And it is a resource today which we must draw upon. When this country is at its best, when this country's people are at their best, we are exercising a brand of global leadership which can reshape, which can remake a world in need. So when you go uh, through the exhibition, you'll see as David uh, has uh, already identified, uh, a ring of chairs and a flip chart, uh, a symbol for what it means to bring, the other, bring communities together and to support them in their own efforts. You will see images of university graduates, you will see images of the restoration of proud histories and traditions. When Canada is at its best, this is the kind of leadership that we are providing. And it is a leadership that is in demand today, perhaps more so than ever before in our history. So in Bridges That Unite, we hope that you will find a way to explore these ideas. We we'll hope that you'll have an opportunity to reflect upon them, to challenge them, to engage them, to remake all of our views and visions of what this country and its people could do uh, in the uh, next uh, generation of our leadership. Uh, because there is a Nobel Peace Prize waiting for us. Uh, we now have to define how it is that we will earn it. Uh, I know we will. Uh, it is such a delight and honor to be uh, here in Concordia, to be in Montreal with Bridges at Unite. 
I want to uh, thank all the volunteers who have been an essential part of making this happen. There are members uh, of the uh, teams of volunteers from the World Partnership Walk and the World Partnership Golf here, so thank you for your leadership. There are leaders of the Ismaili community here in Montreal. I want to thank you for your extraordinary collaboration. Together, we can make this conversation uh, a launching pad for a new phase of Canadian global leadership, one that we will be proud of and one that our children's children will look back and say, that was a generation that led, that was a country that led, that was a country that remade a world when it was deeply in need. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Bridges at Unite. Bienvenue. Um, to give you a, a little flavor of some of this work in action, I'm going to ask um, uh, my colleague, Lori Peters, who's the Director of Public Affairs at Aga Khan Foundation Canada, to say a few words by way of introduction to a short video we're going to show. Uh, Lori. Merci, Karine. Et aussi, je vais vous dire, il nous reste 10 minutes avant que vous pourriez explorer l'exposition aussi. Yeah. Um, I Oh, I knew that would happen. Um, I, uh, as you know, if you have uh, visited the exhibit already, or if you happen to read the uh, article in Le Devoir on the weekend, you know that Aga Khan Development Network has been working in Afghanistan um, uh, since the 90s. And uh, in the exhibit, we profile our work in Afghanistan. And we suggest that in attacking the root causes of poverty on multiple fronts, in making a long-term commitment, in allowing the community to lead, that in countries even as unstable and fragile as Afghanistan, there is hope and success is possible. Donc, j'aimerais maintenant uh, vous uh, présenter quelques extraits de nouveaux films. C'est un film qui s'appelle Afghanistan en transition, un voyage de découverte. Ce film s'est produit par le journaliste Richard Finney. Uh, ce film documente son retour dans le nord de l'Afghanistan grâce aux investissements canadiens, les communautés autrefois, autrefois démunies et dépendantes de la cultivation du pavot. Ces communautés retrouvent un lueur d'espoir. So, I would like to leave you with an eight-minute excerpt of a new film we've produced entitled Change in the Making, Making a Journey in Afghanistan. Bon voyage. It was beautiful. What a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful Sira in grade five. So thank you very much for, uh, for that. I'm looking forward to the whole film. Before I invite Dr. Woodsworth to join Khalil to, uh, to see the exhibition, I just want to remember, empathy. You mentioned the word empathy in your speech. I thought that was, that's the word that's going to stick in my mind from this evening. Before, uh, before I invite Dr. Woodsworth to join Khalil for a tour of the exhibit, I'm just going to give you a little idea of uh, how the evening is going to proceed from here on in. There are guides here. They'll be wearing red vests. And uh, they're on hand to show you around the exhibition, to accompany you. And the, the team comes from three universities. They come from McGill, Concordia, and the University of Montreal. Et uh, ils ont toutes des connaissances énormes. Uh, ils étudient dans les, uh, dans les champs du développement international, le droit. Ils connaissent très bien les, uh, les études économiques. And they're passionate about the issues addressed in the exhibition that you'll see out there and the subject that you saw in the film. And they're keen to share their stories because they have stories to tell about uh, the Aga Khan Foundation and, and the kinds of work that it does uh, in, in many countries of the world. Les guides vêtus de vestes en rouge sont à votre disposition et pour toute la visite de l'exposition, uh, par le bias de leurs études et leur, uh, dans leur domaine de, divers, y compris le droit, l'économie, le développement international, ils connaissent très bien les thèmes. So I ask you to go out and talk to them. They've got, they've got all kinds of things that, uh, that they can talk to you about. Finally, uh, our hosts would like uh, to remind us, all of us, to leave comments and to record a video testimonial. So there's a video camera out there, and you can, you can talk into it. You can uh, talk about uh, what you saw and how you feel and what you're thinking after seeing the film of, and, of course, the exhibition. And there's a website, of course. So uh, you might go home, but uh, the exhibition is going to follow you around. It's uh, 
bridgesthatunite.ca. That's www. Just think, try and put that into your head. Bridgesthatunite, all one word, .ca. And you can continue the conversation, as Khalil talked about so, uh, so importantly, about the Canada in the 21st century. So thank you very much. I feel very honored to have been here this evening and honored to be in it, able to speak to you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Congratulations, because it is beautiful. To the organizers at uh, Aga Khan Foundation Canada and their hosts at Concordia University who are so welcoming. And uh, it's, it's actually very exciting. And enjoy the exhibition. Je vous souhaite une bonne visite et merci beaucoup et bonne soirée. Bye-bye.